Today we're looking at the 10 streets in North America that moved the most people. You know the drill. I'm going to tell you how I analyzed it and then we're going to count them down 10 through 1. Welcome to City Nerd, weekly content on cities and transportation, usually in the form of a top 10 list, always with gratuitous use of Google Maps. You know, I really wanted to do something around urban streets this week just because I got really tired of looking at freeways. And I kind of wanted this to be a top 10 of really pretty multimodal streets with like dedicated bus lanes, protected bike lanes, wide sidewalks with generous furnishing zones. And we'll see some of that today, but today's video is really all about moving people. So this will be similar to the busiest bridges and tunnels video I did a while back, but a couple of key differences. One is this time I won't be leaving out cities that just don't have tunnels and bridges. And number two, I'm going to go off observed capacity for this one rather than agency reported volumes, which are hard to find and hard to make apples to apples comparisons on. So before we dive in, some definitions. First, for streets, I want a segment that's at least a mile. I mean, I'm actually interested in corridors, not just segments of a couple of blocks where two subways overlap. So for example, 42nd Street in New York, where you have the S and the 7 overlapping, is not a mile, so I'm not counting it. Second, like with the Bridges video, I'm interested in how things run when the streets are kind of at peak demand. So I'm looking at 8 to 9 a.m. Some assumptions. For transit, I'm taking something like halfway between seated capacity and a crush load as what I'm calling capacity. So that's going to be 100 people in a subway car, 75 in like an articulated BRT bus and 50 in a regular bus. Also 30 in a micro bus, which I'll talk more about when we get there. For roadways, I'm assuming a thousand people per general purpose lane per hour as a baseline and 15 at an hour if it's like a major artery. In reality, capacity varies a lot based on things like conflicting pedestrian volumes, vehicle occupancy, cab and ride hail deadheading, you name it. So I'm just using a blanket assumption. If you have thoughts, let me know down in the comments. So right off the bat, let me just tell you that Mexico City has 10 plus streets where there is a nine car subway line running on two minute headways. So that's really what you have to beat to even sniff this list. So before you get down in the comments asking me where City X or Street Y are, ask yourself if you have a double track subway system or a single track subway system that runs every two minutes. Other caveats, I didn't include commuter train corridors like Park Avenue in the Upper East Side because I just wanted to look at transportation that serves the corridor itself. And as usual, keep in mind that Everything in today's video is based on today's schedules, which may be impacted by COVID, which is unfortunate. And finally, I'm not saying I've come up with a 100% foolproof, technically correct top 10 list here. This is a YouTube video I spent a few days on. So it's entirely possible I missed a street somewhere or some awesome bus service that I didn't know about. But I will go through how I did the calculations as we go through, so you can check my numbers and let me know if you see something different down in the comments. Okay, table setting is over, so let's get into it. Number 10, and get ready for more adventures in bad pronunciation. This is Calzada San Antonio Abad in central Mexico City, and we're looking at the segment between Chabacano and Pino Suarez and Metro Line 2. The 2 has 9 cars, it runs on 2 minute headways, 100 passengers a car, that's going to be 27 7,000 people an hour. I've also got 24 buses an hour, 46 micro buses, and three lanes on a major artery. And that gets us to about 34,100 in the peak hour. It's a lot of buses and I still can't tell you for sure that I'm counting all the bus services accurately. I did my best to count up all the Cambions and the combis and the micro buses, but it's kind of a futile effort. I mean, I seriously doubt all the services are listed on Google. So if you have better intel, let me know down in the comments. Number nine, we're going into the heart of Manhattan and it won't be the last time we're here. This is Broadway between Times Square 42nd and 14th with the BMT Broadway line running underneath. By the way, this list by definition will favor cut and cover subways. So make of that what you will. So in the AM peak hour, I've got eight end trains, 
eight Q trains, 10 R trains, and seven W trains. So right away, you can see New York does not have two minute frequencies the way that Mexico City does, but they make up for it with double tracking and stacking multiple services on a single corridor. Anyway, that's 33 trains times 10 cars times 100 passengers, 33,000 people moved. Got one travel lane and a very nice bike lane to add 1,500. I'm calling a bike lane 500. So you get to a total of 34,500. By the way, I am assuming 10 cars for New York subway. You might see a nine or 11 in some places, but generally I think 10 is right for the services on this list. But subway nerds, correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong. One other thing, you'll notice I'm not including pedestrians in these calculations. I mean, all the streets on this list have sidewalks and I'm not gonna try to compare the capacity of one sidewalk with another, but maybe we talk about pedestrian environments in a future video. Number eight, we're going back to CDMX, this time to Avenida Chapultepec on the west side. This is the segment between the Chapultepec and Balderas stations on the one line. By the way, if you don't really know the Mexico City Metro, it's a little like Paris, if you know Paris. It's single track, mostly rubber tired. The transfer points are kind of nicely distributed instead of being packed into a single overloaded node. It's nicely designed, but unfortunately it's nicely designed for a city that's probably about half the size of what Mexico City has become. Anyway, line one is carrying 27,000 people in the peak direction on Chapultepec. And then I count 22 buses an hour, four travel lanes and a pretty nice bike lane. It gets you to 34,600. I kind of want to give bonus points because they preserved a historic aqueduct in the median, but I stayed disciplined. Oh, and in case you were wondering, yeah, I was in Mexico City last week. So you're seeing actual up to the moment video footage instead of Google Street Views. Number seven, and we're going back to New York. If you haven't figured it out already, this video turned out to be a New York-Mexico City cage match. I mean, the story here is North America really has two mega cities. What's the famous quote? LA is 72 suburbs in search of a city. Eh, I think that's kind of rude and sort of less and less relevant over time, but it kind of fits this list. Anyway, number seven is 8th Avenue in Manhattan between West 50th and West 14th, the IND 8th Avenue line. Checking the schedules, I've got the A running 16 trains, the C running six, and the E running 12. I've got line 20 running three buses an hour, and it's a one-way street, so I'm just giving credit for half the travel lanes. There's a protected bike lane too. And that gets you to a person throughput of about 36,700. For number six, we're going to the east side of Mexico City. This is Calzada Ignacio Zaragoza between Zaragoza Station and Moctezuma Station, also on the one line. Okay, so I didn't say these were gonna be North America's 10 streets with the slickest urban design or the 10 greenest streets, however you define it. But Zaragoza is a street that moves a crap ton of humans. You've got the 27,000 on line one. Then I'm seeing seven regular buses and 89 micro buses. And I still feel like I'm probably undercounting. This is a principal artery with five travel lanes. So that's another 7,500 and it's a total of 37,500. Number five, Broadway shows up again on this list, but now we're going to the Upper West Side. By the way, Broadway between Marcy and Myrtle in Brooklyn also wasn't too far from making this list. So we could have had Broadway three times. Anyway, this is from 96th where the one, two, and three join up on the IRT Broadway 7th Avenue line down to West 50th where the line goes south on 7th. In case you're wondering, I didn't look at 7th as its own segment just because it's an adjacent segment and it just has the exact same subway lines. But if it makes you feel better, consider 7th number 5A on this list. So I've got 18 one trains, 11 two trains and seven three trains for a total of 36. So that's 36,000 passengers. I've got bus 104 making five runs. So total throughput is around 39,300 people. Hey, if you're wondering about my assumptions on vehicle capacity, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. This is the transit capacity and quality of service manual from the Transportation Research Board. And it's sort of a Bible for US-based transit planning and engineering practitioners. And you can absolutely nerd out on this thing for hours. Number four, we're going back to Mexico City this time on the north side. This is Avenida Insurgentes Norte between the Indias Verdes and La Raza metro stops on line three. You know, I was trying to research this one and realized Google Translate just still has a long way to go. I mean, 
Green Indians, really? So, word to Google if you're listening, and I know you always are. Translating the names of stations makes a subway system less comprehensible, not more. I can't go looking for a Green Indian station in Mexico City. Anyway, there's just a lot going on here. Besides the 27,000 people on the subway, you've got Metrobus service down the median on either side of line three. Metrobus is Mexico City's BRT system that opened in 2005, and it's up to seven lines now. And it's pretty sweet. You tap your Metro card at the entrance to the platform to get in, just like you would for the subway. Although it's more expensive, it's six pesos instead of the five you pay on the subway. And then the buses themselves are just super slick and they just zip through on the dedicated lanes. The bus lanes and stations on Insurgentes Norte serve the main branch of Metrobus 1 and some of the Metrobus 3 runs as well. So I'm counting 51 BRT runs in the peak hour times 75 passengers. So that's another 3,800 people moved. And that's a lot of buses, but just for perspective, even with an articulated bus nearly once a minute, you're not even achieving a capacity that's much more than 10% of the metro. But, you know, BRT is way cheaper and easier to build, so it's trade-offs. Finally, I'm counting nine regular buses and 20 micro buses, and then you've got five travel lanes on a principal arterial. So your total is about 39,400 people moved. Before we move on, let's go south a bit. If you're in the U.S. and you hear about Insurgentes, it's usually about Insurgentes Sur, south, which has even more Metrobus Line 1 service, and is just a lot more aesthetically pleasing from an urban design perspective. Insurgentes Norte is not pretty, but man, is it ever functional. Anyway, I'm thinking about making a bonus video with a lot of footage and observations that I don't really want to get into here. So let me know down in the comments if you're interested in more Mexico City content. Number three, we're going back to New York. Do you have whiplash yet? This is Queens Boulevard in Queens. The segment is between the Forest Hills 71st Avenue and the Woodhaven Boulevard subway stations. You've got four subways to choose from with 14 E trains, 12 F trains, 8 M trains, and 8 R trains peak direction in the AM peak hour. So that's 42 trains, 42,000 passengers. I've got buses 60, QM11, and QM18 making 11 runs, and I've got four travel lanes and a protected bike lane. And I'm crediting Queens Boulevard with 1,500 per lane per hour, even though it does have a lot of at-grade crosswalks. I just have to think it dominates the green time at the signals. I mean, look at this thing. The street design with the front roads and the little cuts in the median across the protected bike lane. Man, maybe the U.S. and Mexico just aren't as different when it comes to traffic engineering as I thought. Anyway, add it all up and you get a throughput of 49,100 people. Okay, before we get to the top two, you know, I just got done saying thanks for helping me hit a thousand subscribers in last week's video, but now just look at this madness. I mean, I really, really appreciate the support for this channel, even if I don't fully understand it. And you know, I'm a math head, so I went ahead and extrapolated last week's growth rate, and it looks like by by February 5th of next year, I should hit 10 billion subscribers. So everybody, thanks in advance for helping me reach that milestone. Oh, and don't forget to leave topic suggestions below. I kind of went with my own ideas the last couple weeks, but I do have a couple of recent viewer suggestions on the front burner. So if you've got an idea that I love, I'll probably make a video about it and I'll definitely give you a shout out. Okay, my dishonorable mention is just for I don't know, freeways. At 2,000 people per lane per hour, you'd need 17 lanes to even sniff this list. And you'd never build a 17 lane freeway because you'd never get efficient lane utilization. I mean, you'd have to have like 13 or 14 lanes of drivers who don't plan on using an exit anytime soon in an urban environment. It's just nonsense, but I guess we're still building things like that. Honorable mention, you know, when I thought of this video idea, I imagine it would be a survey of cool, diverse streets from all over the continent. Maybe we'd have stops in Chicago, Toronto, DC. It didn't turn out that way, but I'll give an honorable mention to Market Street in San Francisco. You've got all the BART trains that come through the Transbay tube, which right now is four different lines at four times an hour each. You've got Muni light rail stations, you've got Muni buses, you've got the F historic streetcar line. I wouldn't count the Geary BRT for this just because it runs on kind of a short segment of Market Street, but 
the street has a lot going on. It's just, it's not nearly enough to make this list. Final honorable mention is for the Mexico City Metro. Not for capacity, because that thing is crowded as heck, and not for reliability, which I don't think is any better than the New York subway, but just for legibility. It's just so easy to look at the network and figure out your trip, and all the lines run four minute headways or better. Plus, I just kind of love that all the stations have their own iconography. It's just kind of fun trying to figure out what they're showing you. I mean, Doc Torres on the line eight is like some doctors. So I don't know, I just kind of love that. Okay, number two, we're back to Manhattan, and this is the IND 6th Avenue line. This segment is between West 33rd and West 9th, and I'm seeing six B trains, nine D trains, 12 F trains, and nine M trains. So that's only 36, which is less than Queens Boulevard, but wait, there's more. You've got the PATH tunnel, that runs trains from New Jersey up 6th. This is 20 trains an hour. They are shorter trains. I've also got seven buses an hour, two general purpose lanes, and a protected bike lane. So your final tally is 49,400. Now, before I reveal number one, which some of you may have already guessed, let me just give you my big takeaway from this list, which is whatever your criticisms of the New York subway, I would argue that the New York of today could not be New York without a double tracked subway system. New York is the most economically powerful city on this continent and probably will be for the entire lifetimes of everyone watching this video. Because way early on, people had the foresight to get the money and the politics aligned to build a high capacity transportation system that allows a level of mobility, commerce, and just sheer freedom that you can't get any other way that I've seen. So, okay, end of soapbox. Number one is Lexington Avenue on the Upper East Side. East 125th, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to 42nd Street Grand Central Terminal. So for Lexington, you've got 13 four trains, 13 five trains, and 22 six trains for a total of 48,000 passengers. At least, I think I'm reading the six schedule right. Can the New York subway system even handle 20 plus trains in an hour? Eh. But I've got 20 buses, which have a dedicated lane, by the way. And it's just one way, so I'm just counting one general purpose travel lane. So it's a total of a clean 50,000 in person capacity. And that is it. Lexington Avenue is your number one. And you can consider Park and Lafayette further down the Lexington line as 1A and 1B, if you like. Big thanks to Mexico City for just being amazing this last week. It's an incredible city. But New York, just relax. You're still the urban mobility king for now. Thanks for joining, and I'll have a new topic for you next week.